Hi, it's Robin. I heard that Bitcoin is a thing nowadays, but I felt left out since I wasn't able to mine it on my Commodore 64. But now it's possible thanks to Bitcoin Miner 64 by YTM Elysium. I've got it loaded up here on my 64. Press D for demo mode. And here it is. So on this screen, we see there's a status. Mining for Bitcoin takes two hashes. So in the status, you can see it switching between the first and second hash. The block it's currently processing is just full of zeros. This is just a demo block that's built into the program. You can see that the target is a really large number. The smaller the target, the higher the difficulty is for the block to be solved. Essentially, mining for Bitcoin is just doing a bunch of difficult math problems over and over again until you come up with an answer that's smaller than the target listed. The bigger the target, the easier it is to find a solution. So this is an unrealistic target that a Commodore 64 can solve in about 30 minutes. The nonce that keeps counting up there is a nonsense number that gets added into the hash. Typically the nonce is just incremented by one and then the hash is run again. The way the hash operation works is that incrementing the nonce creates a completely different hash each time that you can see down there at the bottom. It also shows how long the commuter is taking for each hash, currently 3.5 seconds. On a previous version of the software, it took 4.5 seconds. This is a substantial improvement. Usually Bitcoin mining is measured in hashes per second, which is just the inverse of this number. So it can do around 0.3 hashes per second. This program is written in C. If it was written in pure machine language, it'd probably be faster. I'd just guess maybe two, five, even 10 times faster. But unfortunately, even that much faster wouldn't be enough to make this a practical mining rig. Modern Bitcoin mining rigs are measured in giga hashes, that is billions of hashes per second. But I'm not giving up yet. Here's my super CPU accelerator. Let's give this a try. Okay, here the super CPU is active. Okay, we'll load and run the miner again demo mode, and here it is. It's now doing a hash in just 0.3 seconds down from 3.5 seconds earlier, maybe about 10 times faster, depending on how it's rounding. But the Super CPU should be able to go 20 times faster. It has a 20 megahertz 65816 processor in it compared to a stock C64 that just runs at one megahertz. So why is it only 10 times faster? Well, I think we can speed it up. I'm just going to reset here. And we'll look at the disk directory and load this optimized program and list it. And it's just a series of pokes. This first poke reveals extra control registers in the super CPU. Normally they're disabled for compatibility purposes so that existing old C64 software can't accidentally fiddle with the super CPU configuration. So this poke reveals the extra registers. Then this poke changes the optimization mode for the super CPU. And according to the super CPU user's guide, we can optimize for a program that uses the standard text screen memory mode of the VIC. And there's those pokes there. What this instructs the super CPU to do is just use its internal fast 20 megahertz RAM at all times, except if it wants to change screen memory, it'll then send that byte through into the Commodore 64 so the video chip can display screen memory. All other RAM access is just done internally at 20 megahertz otherwise. So we'll run that. And now we'll load and run Miner 2. And let's try it again, demo mode, D. And there we go. 
Now our hashes are down to 0.1 second. Of course, it may be rounding, but we're at least 20 times faster now, maybe even a bit more. So we'll let this run through a completion. I hope it'll just take a couple minutes. I'll speed it up in the editing. Hey, there we go. All right, so we've successfully completed a block. So I was curious if we could take this further. YTM actually made a Python client based on the work of Stack Smashing, who actually made a Game Boy Bitcoin miner, including actual network connectivity so it could actually transfer blocks. Now, YTM adapted that, but unfortunately, he only had it set up to use a TCP socket for the VICE emulator out of the box, it wouldn't work with a real C64. So I put my terrible Python skills to work and hacked away at it today until I got to successfully transfer from my Windows laptop. So let's take a look at how that works. First of all, we have to get from the C64 to the Windows machine. And for that, I have a vintage Data20 printer interface. which is a little grody here, but there it is, a printer interface, which connects into the C64 user port. And on the other end, gives you a 25 pin RS-232 connector. Well, not literally 25 pins, a bunch of them. A bunch of them aren't in there. Now, of course, my modern Windows 10 computer doesn't have a serial port on it, but you can buy these USB to serial adapters still. And I dug around a box and found this adapter to go from the 9 pin here to the 25. So there we go from the C64 through all that to USB. And we just plug that in there. Again we'll run the optimize. We'll run the miner. Okay, so we just hit any key on the C64 now. On this side, I'm going to run this Python program called test ntgbtminer.python. Let's see if it works. Okay, here we go. So on the C64 screen, it's receiving the block. Well, on the Python side, it's sending it over. Now, it's pretty slow. I had a lot of trouble adapting this. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Oh, receiving target. Looks like it's working. Receiving nonce. Yes. Okay. So, it has now sent... I'll just ignore that status stuff it's doing on the Python screen. So now, here is a block that has been sent over to the C64 over the serial link at 1200 baud. And you can see that it's working away with a realistic target. And the nonce is starting at zero and working all the way up. And it's trying to get to a much lower target, which will take a lot longer <laughs> to actually reach. So I'm not sure exactly how long it'll take, but I know YTM on another block that he had calculated it would take 337 years for the Commodore 64 to reach that nonce and solve that block. Okay. So, yeah. So even with the super CPU here, uh, if we're running 20 times faster, maybe we've cut that down to about 15 years to solve a block but uh, I think another computer will probably have solved it by then. So I believe in the target, how it has some of the zeros in red, that's the closest to a match that the C64 has come up with so far. And once in a while you can see them flash into green, that's because at that moment, that particular hash was actually correct. Or not correct, <laughs> a few digits matched. It's kind of like a lottery where it's just throwing 
essentially random numbers and then seeing if it matches the target if it's lower than. Each block actually has many solutions, but even just finding one of them is very difficult. So it looks like I'm not going to be getting Bitcoin rich anytime soon by using my C64, but it's a pretty cool achievement of YTM. Congratulations, YTM, on making this happen just for the, the fun, for the adventure of it. It's pretty hilarious that we can have our beloved 39-year-old computers even attempt to do something like mine Bitcoin. So even if I'm not getting rich, I actually did learn quite a bit both about how Bitcoin works and actually I got some Python practice too that I didn't particularly want, but I can appreciate it nonetheless. Hi, it's Robin from the future. I thought that was the end of the video, but I have a little more information here. Adrian of The Digital Basement was watching this very video while it was in early access for my patrons and decided to try Bitcoin Miner 64 for himself on his Turbo Chameleon cartridge. When he ran it, he noticed that the nonce started at zero, while some of mine started at other values. Maybe some of you also noticed that. In a way, it doesn't matter what the nonce is. The miner just needs to find one that returns a hash smaller than the target. But it does matter when we're trying to compare solution times between the Super CPU and Turbo Chameleon. And I was also curious about the source of this discrepancy. I looked at YTM's C source code, and it turns out the nonce isn't initialized in demo mode. It's just whatever the C64 RAM is initialized to when it boots. In Vice, which is what YTM used for testing, RAM is initialized to zero. On the Turbo Chameleon, it seems RAM is initialized to FF hex. But on my 64C with Easy Flash 3 and Jiffy DOS, it's initialized to 5555 AAAA. And on my Super CPU, all four bytes are initialized to AA. So I did some disassembly of Bitcoin Miner 64 and found where in memory the four bytes of the nonce are stored. So then I could load Bitcoin Miner, poke all zeros into those spots, and then run the program starting at a nonce of zero, as intended. Rather than the 2 minutes 35 seconds it took starting at a nonce of all A's, with a nonce of zero it took just 71 seconds for the optimized Super CPU to reach a solution, beating the Turbo Chameleon by about 10 seconds. So a huge thanks to Adrian for spotting that. Make sure you check out the video he made in response to mine. It's on his new second channel, so you'll probably want to subscribe. Link is in the video description below. Okay, back to Robin of the past to wrap things up. If you want to try this yourself or just read up about it more, there'll be links in the video description. Thanks to my patrons for their support. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider it. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. I'll just leave this running in case it works. Thank you.